Hello, I am Romalaba, a partner and a senior consultant at the Markete Group. Welcome to our tutorial. Today we will discuss the Van Vestendor pricing technique and how it can help you to price your product or service and make decisions regarding price positioning. As a reminder, we are a full-service international consulting company with more than 20 years of experience conducting voice-of-customer marketing research. And we have expertise in the healthcare, medical device, and pharmaceutical industries. We conduct research internationally thanks to our two offices in the US and Europe, as well as our network of international partners. We use proven primary research techniques as well as advanced methodologies in qualitative and quantitative research. The Van Vestendorp pricing technique is one such advanced methodology. We regularly help our customers to answer one simple question. How should I price my product? I can tell you that while that question may seem simple, the answer never is. There are many different pricing techniques. You can refer to our previous webinars about pricing research on our website, themarketegroup.com, and our YouTube channel for more information about the pricing methodologies that we employ. But here is a quick summary of the main declarative pricing research techniques. First is the direct open-ending questioning. That is a qualitative technique in which respondents are asked directly how much they would pay for a product. This technique should not be used alone in making pricing decisions. Instead, the results of direct open-ended questioning should be used as guidance to help you to develop a quantitative study that would inform your pricing decision. The second one is the monadic concept testing. This is the simplest and most effective pricing technique, but it can also be quite expensive because it requires large sample sizes to test multiple price points. You, therefore, you should use monadic concept testing when a price or a set of prices is already known and you simply require validation. The third technique is the cascading price analysis. It is an optimization of the monadic concept and, and it lowers the required sample to test several price points. However, negotiation behavior of respondents is likely to happen if the exercise is repeated several times. So we at the Marketer Group recommend testing maximum three price points. And the last or another declarative technique is the price sensitivity meter, which is also known as the Van Westendorp technique. And today we will focus on the Van Westendorp methodology. The purpose of this tutorial is to explain the pros and cons of the technique, but also describe its implementation and give you some information about how to interpret the results. The price sensitivity meter, or PSM, was introduced by the Dutch economist Peter van Westendorp in 1976. This pricing model is designed to assess customers' perceptions of a product's value. The Van Westendorp model is based on the following assumptions. First, the model assumes that price signals quality. Specifically, it assumes that there is a positive relationship between price and quality and customers will pay more for a higher quality product. Considering this, Customer will not purchase a product if the price is above an amount where the quality no longer justifies the price or the customers will not purchase the product below an amount that signals unacceptably poor quality. Second, the model rests on the theory of reasonable prices. That is, it assumes that customers have some understanding of the estimated cost or range of prices that would be reasonable for a product. It means if your product is a novel game-changing product that nobody knows about, for example, a teletransportation system to get you from point A to point B at light speed, there is little value in using the Van Westendorp technique because your customers are not able to accurately define prices for your product. In some specific cases, 
giving a rough idea of competitive prices may help respondents to benchmark the value of the product and think realistically about its price. Given these assumptions, the Van Vestendorp technique will be able to give you the out-of-pocket expenses respondents are ready to spend for the product. The Van Vestendorp method is easy to implement and does not require a large sample size to provide valuable directional information on pricing. The technique determines the acceptable price range for a new product by asking respondents at which price they would consider the product too cheap, a bargain, expensive, and too expensive. The questions can be asked in person, by telephone, or through online questionnaires. The format and order of the questions may vary study by study. However, at the marketer group, we suggest, we suggest asking the questions as follows. At what price would you consider the product too expensive and you would not consider buying it? Second, at what price would you consider the product to be so inexpensive that you would doubt its quality and would not consider buying it? Third question is, at what price would you consider the product to be getting expensive but you would still consider buying it? And at last, at what price would you consider the product to be a bargain and a great deal for the money? We recommend this order of questions so that the customer starts by setting the upper and lower limits of acceptable prices for the product and then it is easier for him to pick expensive and bargain prices within the range of prices he has just defined himself. Of course, it is important to include real-time validation of collected data to eliminate inconsistent responses. For instance, the too expensive price cannot be lower than the too cheap price. This may sound like a no-brainer, but always remember Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. The classic Van Westendorp analysis does not inform willingness to purchase, meaning the demand. This is a downside of the classic model because while it is important to know the acceptable price range for a product, it is equally important to know the proportion of customers that will actually purchase the product. Getting insight on demand for your product is possible by extending the set of Van Westendorp questions with the Newton, Miller and Smith extension proposed in 1993. To do so, we include two questions on purchase likelihood that are directly connected with the given answers of the customers. First question is how likely would you be to purchase the product if it were offered at your bargain price? And second, how likely would you be to purchase the product if it were offered at your expensive price? Respondents indicate their purchasing, purchasing intention using the 11 point just a purchase probability scale, which has been found to be highly effective as a predictive measure of future purchase behavior. You can see that the just a scale shows both numbers and text descriptions. Again, remember Murphy's Law and make sure to use real-time quality control to avoid irrational responses regarding purchase likelihood. Indeed, and by definition, respondents are expected to report highest likelihood to purchase at their bargain price. Therefore, purchase intention at their expensive price must be lower than or equal to purchase intention at the bargain price. In the end, this additional data gives you an estimation of the relative demand at each price, which allows you to approximate revenues. So, what are the outcomes of the Van Westendorp methodology? Well, Van Westendorp results are displayed graphically like this, with four curves, one for each price type, too cheap, bargain, expensive, and too expensive, with a y-axis that indicates the normalized frequency and the x-axis that indicates price. As you can see, two of the four cumulative frequencies are inverted so that it creates four intersection points and two price ranges. Conventional practice inverts the cumulative frequency for too cheap and bargain, but it has no impact on results if you invert the other two curves. 
The point of marginal cheapness, or PMC, represents the lower bound of the acceptable price range for the product tested. On the opposite side, the point of marginal expensiveness, or PME, is the upper bound of an acceptable price range. This range of acceptable prices is also called the range of competitive prices. If you consider a mature market, most of the pricing strategies adopted by your competitors will be within this range. The other price range given by the Van Westendorf methodology is the stress range that you can see between the indifference price point, or IPP, and the optimal price point, or OPP. At the indifference price point, an equal number of respondents rate the product as either a bargain or expensive. So at this price, the quality is judged to be good or fair. So it's worth the money. We usually assume that the IPP reflects the average price for the product in a mature market or the price that is actually charged by a vendor that has strong market share dominance. The optimal price point is defined as the price point at which the number of respondents who reject the product as too expensive equals the number of respondents who reject it for being too cheap. Optimal refers to the fact that there is an equal trade-off in extreme sensitivities to the price at both ends of the price spectrum. Optimal should not be taken to imply that it is the ideal price. The stress range can be seen as the relevant range of prices for your product. So just one important note on the interpretation of uh, the intersections or the ranges. Uh, of course, it varies in literature, and those points and ranges should be viewed as directional information for pricing decision making, as opposed to concrete price limits. If you include the Newton, Miller, and Smith extension to the Van Westendorf methodology, you can determine the trial and revenue curves. The trial curve represents the probability of purchase at each price point, and it will help you to identify the price that will stimulate maximum consumer trial. The revenue curve is generated simply by multiplying the proportion of people who would purchase the product at each price by the price of the product. It gives you the price that maximizes revenues. The difference between the point of maximum trial and the point of maximum revenue represents the relative inelasticity of your product. If you increase the price, you will see a decrease in sales, but without a decrease in revenue. So pricing your product at the point of maximum revenue leads to losing a percentage of customers. However, the incremental revenue may more than offset the decline in sales. Of course, this depends on your production, marketing, and distribution costs. To summarize, the Van Westendorp methodology is a declarative technique for pricing decision making that is simple and cost effective to implement. It provides you with insight regarding the range of competitive prices or the acceptable range of prices for your product and also the relevant price range or what we call the stress range. Insight on demand, potential revenues, and the price inelasticity may also be obtained if you use the extension of the pricing technique. At the Marketing Group, we believe that this method is highly informative in making pricing decisions. To help you to interpret the results of Von Westendorp analysis and the extension, we have developed the VV Pro software. This software allows automated analysis and helps you to avoid manual manipulation of data, which is prone to error. So thank you very much for your time. If you have any question about the methodology or our VV Pro software, do not hesitate to contact, to contact us. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much again. Bye-bye.